Our next speaker is Rusty Towell from Abilene Christian University. Rusty is the director of the Nuclear Energy Experimental Testing Lab and will be discussing some of the SALT activities that he's overseeing at ACU. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here. I want to tell you about the molten salt research reactor that we plan to build at, at ACU. For starters, a little bit about Abilene Christian University. We are in Texas. We are in pretty much the center mass of the state of Texas. We are about where the L is in that image. In Abilene, which is west of Dallas-Fort Worth and northwest of the Austin-San Antonio area, a city of about 120,000 people, um, Abilene Christian University has its origin as a small liberal arts university, but we have a growing enrollment. And this fall, despite the pandemic, marks the third consecutive year in a row where we have a record number of students on campus of over 5,000 students, uh, close to 4,000 on our main campus in Abilene. Then we also have an ACU Dallas location that has a lot of, of graduate and online courses. But one of the things we're very proud of is that we engage students in everything we do. Uh, U.S. News and World Report uh, has ranked uh, ACU in the, the top 10 and, and four uh, six student success areas. And particular interest to this talk is undergraduate research. The, uh, the physics program, which is the uh, youngest of the, the, the hard sciences, was started over 50 years ago with a real focus on uh, bringing our undergraduate research to, to everything we do. Uh, engineering was added more recently in 2012. We launched the program. Uh, our first students graduated 2016 and we were able to get ABET accreditation. That program has grown to 20 faculty and, and close to 200 students now. The university has invested uh, over $50 million in new infrastructure. We've hired a, a vice president of research to really help us uh, develop re research and our corporate engagement. And there's plans underway now for a new $15 million science and engineering research facility. We've had a, a longstanding model where we love to uh, expose our students to real world problems and, and address the solutions to them in world class facilities. So in the old model, we would uh, take our students and spend our summers at national labs. And so uh, the first 18 years I was at Abilene Christian University, I took a group of students and would go and spend my summers at Fermilab or Brookhaven or one of these other facilities. And um, that, those are great. Uh, and the students have great um, learning experiences there and were able to contribute to world-class uh, experiments. But our new model is to, uh, to develop world-class facilities at Abilene Christian University. So we're able to bring... Uh, those world-class facilities and welcome the world to, to come to ACU. ACU's mission is to educate students for Christian service and leadership throughout the world. What does that look like if you're an engineering student or a physics student um, or math or computer science? And that's the, that's the origin or the next lab, the Nuclear Energy Experimental Testing Lab. We're looking to find global solutions to world critical needs. And I think this, this group will certainly appreciate the, the, the solution to the, the world's critical needs can largely be addressed by uh, molten salt reactors. Our molten salt test loop that's been in operation for over two years, where we circulate about five gallons of, of molten salt. Then the next lab is really focused on addressing uh, energy that's less expensive and safer and cleaner and available. Uh, the high process heat that will produce pure and abundant water and other resources, and then using a, a liquid uh, uh, fueled molten salt reactor, we're able to have access to isotopes, specifically medical isotopes used to diagnose and treat cancer. And if we can do all this in an environment where we can educate the next generation of leaders in nuclear science and engineering, then that's really what we're focused on. And to get there, um, we've made the decision that we really need to um, have our own university research reactor. So ACU intends to design, license, construct, and commission a molten salt research reactor. This project's been uh, underway for um, over four years. Uh, this last summer, despite the pandemic, we were able to have about 65 people on campus working on this project. So that's about 40 students, uh, 20 staff, and five faculty were in, involved all summer in a variety of projects. The, the molten salt test loop, this is the, the image you saw a larger picture of before. For two years, we've been circulating molten salt and allowing us to test instrumentation, uh, make lots of mistakes, learn a lot of things. And we are now in the final steps of, of developing a fluoride molten salt test loop. So this would be a test loop to allow us to, to go up to a 725 degrees, circulate about five gallons of fluoride uh, salt. The next uh, project that we'll, I'll talk to you about is the uh, molten salt test system. So this would be a, a 50 gallon system that we're in the final design stages on. We expect to start uh, assembling this project next summer. It'll have an integrated uh, salt purification system along with it, along with uh, test sections allowing for heat exchangers and things as we continue to develop 
um, our, our molten salt system to look more and more like uh, the reactor. Uh, fission fragment removal team, there's a, a group of chemists that are looking at how do we best remove the unwanted or in some cases the wanted fission fragments out of the salt and uh, make them available to, uh, to medical doctors or scientists. Uh, salt purification system, um, work inside of the glove box shown here. We're uh, working on a small uh, glove box size system, but we're also in the final design stages for a larger system that will be part of the, the molten salt test system. A uh, chemical analysis uh, team is working on a variety of techniques to analyze the content of the salt so that we can better understand uh, what uh, impurities are in the salt and, and monitor the, the, the condition of the salt. We have a, a team working on instrumentation. Uh, we've just recently received our first patent on a, a high temperature flow meter and we're looking at other uh, instrumentations that we can test with our, our molten salt test uh, loops. Uh, the molten salt research reactor, I'll say more about that shortly, but that's the, the, the the research reactor that we'd like to build. Molten salt filters, we have received a NEUP grant to partner with Oak Ridge to, to develop a molten salt filters. And finally, uh, data acquisition systems. Every one of these uh, experimental setups needs a data acquisition system. We're also partnering with the Versal Test Reactor to help develop a data acquisition system that will work for uh, the VTR. And finally, the, the component test system here. A lot of components are available commercially, but very few of them actually been tested in this environment. Even the, when vendors tell you they work at high temperatures or with molten salts, when you actually test them, you find oftentimes a very different story. And so we have an act, active component test system where we are able to take vendors off the shelf components, uh, test them in molten salts and, and report uh, their results back to vendors, which is also important for us. Despite all this uh, work that's, that's happening locally at ACU, uh, we know that we're not going to uh, be able to uh, build, design, build, construct this uh, reactor alone. So we've built ourselves a research alliance, and we're, we're thankful that we have a variety of, of universities that have joined with us. So the next research alliance, or NEXTRA, includes both Abilene Christian University, but also Georgia Tech, Texas A&M, and the University of Texas. And they're providing uh, integrals, uh, they're integral mem members of our team, providing unique capabilities that are, are present to any to them. Um, instead of describing the, the, the details of the projects, let me just go through and, and briefly introduce some of the key members from these other um, universities. At the University of Texas in Austin, uh, Dr. Derek Haas is a, a professor in the Nuclear and Radiation Engineering uh, program, and he is uh, leading the research, uh, the Reactor Research Bay Interface team. Dr. Bill uh, Charlton is the director of UT's uh, trigger reactor, and he is also providing uh, input for the reactor operations and experimental planning. Dr. Kevin Clarno uh, should be very familiar to many people at Oak Ridge because he spent a great amount of his career there where he worked on a variety of codes in, in scale and is a leader of the, the CASEL uh, consortium. He's uh, now a primary contributor to our, our re reactor design team. At the University of Texas, uh, excuse me, Texas A&M University, uh, Dr. Pavel Stekhoff is uh, a lead contributor to our design team, and in particular the fuel handling subsystems. Dr. Mark Kimber is uh, leading the thermal management subsystems, and uh, Dr. Sean McDevitt is, the, of course, the director of A&M's research reactor, and he's also leading our uh, molten salt chemistry group. At uh, Georgia Institute of Technology, uh, contributors are, are, are Dr. Stephen Bogowski. He uh, for, was a longtime director of University of Texas Research Reactor. Um, now he's, um, of course, at Georgia Tech serving as their department chair, and he's helping us with uh, experimental design systems. Uh, Dr. Boyan Petrovic is a, a professor there also with uh, years of experience in industry and helping us with a lot of simulations, particularly right now working on, on shielding calculations for our, our reactor. And of course, Dr. Preet Singh, you already heard from earlier today, so you know his expertise in, in molten salt. The uh, licensing plan that we expect to, to go down for licensing this university research reactor is to, to license under AEA section 104C. Uh, so we'll be following 10 CFR 50.21C, uh, which is the university research reactor. So this will be a university research reactor and it will be licensed with a maximum power of uh, one megawatt thermal. We expect to go through the two-step licensing process, to 10 CFR Part 50, which means we'll submit a separate construction permit than an operating license. 
we believe this gives us the best chance to uh, uh, reach our goal of, of making this reactor go critical uh, by 2025. We had our first uh, public meeting with the NRC just last month. Uh, NRC has been very helpful in early engagement and informal uh, visits and in this first public meeting we have submitted a regulatory engagement plan to them and uh, they have assigned us a docket number so those uh, documents are now uh, publicly uh, available in their Adams system. Uh, site location, uh, there's several sites being uh, investigated but the goal is to build it on or near the ACU campus in Abilene, Texas. We really want this to be a, a training reactor where our students can have first-hand a, a experience and we can also uh, do research that helps uh, everyone in the, the molten salt uh, reactor industry. Because this uh, group is so familiar with the uh, molten salt reactor experiment, I think it makes good sense to compare what we're trying to do with uh, what has already been done. And so our molten salt research reactor is basically a simplified version of the molten salt research experiment that was uh, done at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the 60s. Three high level differences that really um, are all pointing to uh, simplifying the design to streamline licensing are to fuel it with low enriched uranium instead of the high enriched uranium that was used by the MSRE. We're also gonna operate it at lower power. Uh, as I said, this will be um, licensed to be, have a maximum thermal output of one megawatt. That's about an order of magnitude lower than the MSRE was designed for. And we believe we can do this with no uh, water cooling inside of containment, which was uh, one of the, the largest uh, expected hazards and when they were doing their hazard analysis. So uh, keeping water out of the, the containment areas is, is something that one of our design goals. And so if you compare uh, what the, the reactor we plan to build versus the MSRE, uh, then you can see the very, very similar uh, layouts. In, in these cases, the, uh, the primary loop is in containment in, in the center and in both the molten salt research reactor we plan to build and, and the molten salt research experiment. Uh, to the right in both cases in these images is a secondary molten salt loop that allows for a heat exchanger to finally heat some heat dump of the atmosphere and on the left is a, a fuel storage tanks. Primary loop is uh, much like the MSRE, there's a, a reactor core uh, where we have graphite moderator. The, the primary loop uh, will leave the core, go through a pump, through a heat exchanger and, and back into the core. All of this is within a primary containment uh, one difference here is our drain tank will be inside this primary containment. Uh, another difference is we're envisioning uh, keeping the, the fuel bearing salt in the primary loop by using pneumatic pressure so we don't have to have a freeze plug in this uh, design. The uh, secondary loop, uh, another salt loop that will remove the thermal energy produced in their core to uh, the final heat sink of the atmosphere. Uh, maximum power is again one megawatt thermal and we believe the reactor vessel size is about uh, four and a half feet in diameter, and about six feet high, making this uh, whole uh, secondary containment about 10 feet wide and 20 feet high. To, to meet our goal of, of being critical by uh, 2025, to, to meet that goal, then we need to do a lot of things in parallel. And so as we're uh, working on the, the early conceptual design of the reactor, we are currently preparing a construction permit. And so this top box is the regulatory uh, work uh, with the new Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So we plan on submitting our construction permit next year. That's what we've submitted to the NRC in our letter of intent. Um, we are hopeful that the NRC will be able to do a rapid review and turn around a construction permit to us in, a, in short order. Meanwhile, we plan on building a facility on the ACU campus that will be a multi-use facility. So this will have research labs and multi-use research bay. And our goal is to develop, to design this, uh, by early next year to break ground in early 2021 for a 12 to 14 month construction time and have this facility in by 2022, which will allow us to move our larger R&D uh, processes in here. And so we'll continue to do R&D in the current labs we have, but starting in 2022, we'll be able to move in our, our molten salt test system, which are our larger molten salt uh, loop, and then later our integrated test system, which we envision to be of the same size and geometry as the final molten salt research reactor. As soon as you have a construction permit, then we can move from design into construction of the reactor. Um, once we submit an operating license to NRC uh, and they review it, then we'll be able to bring the reactor critical. So it's a, a very challenging uh, timeline, but we do believe that this is doable and we're very optimistic that we'll be able to, to reach this goal.
On, on behalf of those that have funded this research, uh, Department of Energy, Excelsior Foundation, Development Corporation of Abilene and Natura Resources, and, and with thanks to the rest of the collaboration, uh, Nextra, uh, our university collaborators there, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'm delighted to, to take questions if we have time. What are your plans to obtain U-235 for your salt fuel? So we've already engaged uh, the Department of Energy talking about uh, being partners in their research reactor infrastructure program. And they've uh, su submitted a letter of support to us saying that, uh, that they would be happy to work with us to, to provide that. Has NEXT looked into salt sampling strategies and or SSCs? On our current loop, we have a, a salt sampling uh, uh, mechanism. It's not ideal. And so we would love to, uh, to, to know more about what's happening at Vanderbilt and be able to take advantage of what they're learning. But absolutely, we'd love to, to partner with, with Megan. That's what's great about these workshops is you're able to kind of see what everybody's doing and figure out where to look for these collaborations. Um, one more question. Um, will the facility be able to irradiate advanced material specimens and perform PIE? In order to meet our five-year goal, we're really focusing on um, getting a, the reactor um, licensed and building it and going critical. So we're really trying to minimize the um, uh, secondary goals that would certainly be something we'd like to do in the future, but it won't be part of our initial uh, reactor build. Our initial design and build would not include facilities to do that. Is there a document that describes the research objectives associated with this new research reactor? So certainly our regulatory engagement plan has a high level overview. So that's a public document. If you want to go to the NRC, you're able to get it there. Um, there's also um, a variety of unofficial documents on our website that, that might be helpful, but uh, there's not a, a published design document yet. Um, what is the estimated budget for the MSRR? We think it's about $80 million. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I really enjoyed your talk. This is very exciting that somebody's actually going to build a reactor. <laughs> thank you very much.